Alright, another video here today, car repair, one of the ones in the series of my car repair videos. I'm gonna be installing an exhaust manifold on a car. And like I say, be sure to watch it through. Decide there, show you all the ins and outs of doing it. It's not an easy job, something to consider, watch the video and make your mind up if you wanna go for it or have someone else do the job. Yeah, hello and welcome to another video. I'm going to be putting an exhaust manifold on the right side on this 2001 Crown Vic police interceptor. There's no general overview of the engine and you can see the crack. I tried putting some exhaust cement on it. didn't work, which I knew that, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, we're going to start off by, as always, disconnecting the battery. Start with our negative terminal and then we're going to go do the positive terminal and this is definitely important because in a real short time going to be taking the starter off which you're going to be working around wires and that and it is not fun where they put the starter but there it is our wires on it i'm going to spray them up they look fairly corroded okay and it helped if i actually hit the bolt yeah that time we did oops gotta hate that when that happens and we got them sprayed up and we're going to take care and see what happens. Not a lot of room. They're half inch wrench on it I'm using. And trying to work it back and forth. And of course, it's trying to turn the terminal out of the solenoid. And I don't want to break it. So I'm going to try carefully working it back and forth just a little bit at a time. And see if I can break the corrosion that it'll turn. Because I certainly don't want to buy a starter or even a solenoid at this stage of the game. All right, I'm going to let that one go for a minute and go work on the little wire on the starter. This is a 10 millimeter and see how that goes. Now that started that, it deal it didn't want to turn, but that didn't take a lot of working it back and forth. It did turn. Not enough, I could say, room to get up in there with the socket. In some respects, the wrench is probably safer. And there it did want to tighten up a little bit coming off. And just turning it back on and working it gradually. And it, like I say, it's been a real problem. And it don't take much to snap these off. Big things, be patient and keep spraying them up if they're not coming and just keep working them. Start loosening them and if you feel them tightening up, then turn it back on. And here we're going to spray some more lubricant on it. And you can see the rust running out of the threads when I sprayed it. It's been on there since I've owned the car since 2010 and I have never had to put a starter on it, which is a miracle. And they're starting to come with some more ease starting to feel promising and they're returning again and one thing on this i want to point out early on if you read the book on this they have you discharging the ac and everything to change this right exhaust manifold but you don't have to do it but like i say keep watching it is not the easiest to do okay they're back on the starter subject there we got the nut off the small one and there is our wire off of it and now we still got to work on the main wire to the battery okay i don't really want to do what i'm going to do here but i'll repeat i don't want to buy a starter and i think it'll work i got the wrench put back on and on the tip of it i'm going to grip of the vice grips to hold the stud from turning and see if i can break it free and i can say same deal keep working it back and forth and finally it is starting to turn I can say it's going to sort of mess the threads up some on it, but I can probably clean them up before I put it back on with a die. And I can say even if I have to cross thread it, if it tightens up, it beats buying the starter. All yeah, right, finally at last, victory. It's turning on its own without holding it with the vice grips, and it is coming off of it. A little bit more spray in action, and there's more of that nasty old rust coming out. And it is coming off, so uh, by this point, it's going to not snap the stud. I've only done that one or so times in my life. I have had them break off, and luckily that was on old-school Chrysler products. The starters were like $50 starters, but I, these gear reduction starters, I'm certain this is probably a $100-plus starter on this vehicle. Alrighty, the patience on this has finally paid off. Now we can just turn it off with our thumb and index finger, and there it is. 
Now, if that was enough of a problem in itself, it don't get any better when we go to actually unbolt the starter from the vehicle. But that is, here we're going to go for that. The bottom bolt's not bad. It's down there easy enough to get to. And I can say you can have some room on that one. But there's two more besides this one that was quite a sense of humor. And there you can see it broke free. You can even see that corrosion when I'm turning it. It's like I say, goes into that aluminum housing on the transmission is threaded into. Okay, finished removing this bolt. And yeah, I can say, get it. It pretty much didn't turn out without the ratchet and the socket till way at the end. And then finally, you could take it and grab it. It wasn't real bad, but it wasn't, like I say, it didn't turn out real handy. Now, there is the in between bolt. And this is a contraption. I couldn't hardly get the camera up in there, but I used the socket, a universal swivel socket, and two shorter, and one of them's a wobble socket to break this loose. And the other one will be got with the same contraption of stuff, but there you can see it did break loose. I say it's hard to, next to impossible to get the camera, and there is the setup I had to do this. There's the little short wobble extension there's just the regular one and we have our little swivel joint and our 10 millimeter socket okay now that this is broke loose i'm loosening up some more just with the little short stubby wrench i have because i say and that's not going real good so here i went and got a ratcheting wrench and you can see i put it like on the 90 degree angle and it is bringing it the rest of the way out. It's sure a lot faster than working with the setup with the two extensions and that universal swivel. And there's number two bolt out. And there's the other one clear up there. And that's basically going to be done like we did with the middle one with the same setup. You can actually, I got the camera in a little bit better this time. You can see on it and I broke it free and then I'm just going to turn it loose with the uh, setup. I say this one actually because it was more protected luckily wasn't as tight as the other two especially the bottom one. Okay I'm going to reach up there pull that bolt out and there it is success and off comes the starter. A little bit of wiggling and jiggling it's sort of stuck to it again it's been on there i know for a long time and one starter off and there it is lay that off to the side for future installation all righty now we're going to take the serpentine belt off because we're going to remove the ac compressor half inch drive breaker bar i'm using fits right in the belt tensioner and you just push downwards release the tension now just pull it off around the alternator carefully let the tension back off and the belt is off and that takes care of that and that breaker bar is about a 50 year old breaker bar it was my grandfather's and get the belt off from around the ac pulley and we're going to unplug our crankshaft position sensor to wire tight against the compressor just simply push in and like I say, I don't have to use a screwdriver and pull back. And that's unplugged. And then there's going to be on this AC compressor three bolts that hold it on. Two on the bottom and one up on the top. Alrighty, these are also 10 millimeter head bolts on the AC compressor. I'm going to take initially here and just break them all free. And they're fairly snug. I can say this is, seems to be the story of the, everything on this whole project that I'm running into. And it don't get better as you go along, but keep watching and you will see. Okay, I got number two broke. And needs a little bit more. Luckily on these, once I did get them, they turned fairly decent. I had an arrow start one time that I broke a whole of them off. They were that corroded. I got them broke free. They started to turn, and I tried to deal with being careful with that. And it just was so much corrosion between the bolt, and they're so long in the compressor, I couldn't do nothing with them. But you can see these are turning out after I got them broke. And I can say they are fairly long. They're probably about six inch long bolts that hold it on. 
and then get the one more still needs loosened a little bit some of the tension now against the compressor because the other two aren't holding it Alrighty, now i'm going to take and unplug the ac compressor clutch this could have actually been done probably before the only really reason i'm plugging i'm not unhooking the lines or nothing that's the objective although the repair book claims you have to to change this but we'll see but just to give it a little bit more room to pull it out of the way without disconnecting the lines and there and unhook a wire up there at the high pressure switch and then there is a stud here that goes into the cylinder head that supports the ac lines that i still need this to move just a little bit more to be able to access the exhaust manifold bolts and we're going to turn that loose and go figure this is just how the day has been going and instead of the nut on the end of the stud just turning off it's turning the whole stud and we're going to do just like the starter grip of vice grips at the end and try to break the nut free with the wrench i can say so we don't mess the lines up if we can help it there and again i don't want to break them this i've owned this car again 10 years and the air has always blowed ice cold and it's sort of my summertime cruising machine and finally there it is breaking free we're in business if you run into the same trouble as myself on this there is one nice salvation you will see here you don't have to initially take this nut the whole way off because it's not a hole drilled in it's like a u-shaped at the end it's made to slide in the ac lines over that you don't have to only have to loosen the nut that's a little bit of a break and i about have it loose enough and it is free and off to the side and we can get our compressor i'll just support it it sits real nice on the front sway bar and that'll give enough room for clearance and i'll just take and turn this whole stud set up out with the nut on the end and before it goes back in i'll get that nut off so it works right but there it be now that we have this loose it gets even worse now it's time for the exhaust where the converter bolts up to the manifold and they're up there and i initially and I know this isn't going to work, trying a long extension, because you can't get straight on it with the swivel socket. And we're here to a three-quarter inch drive ratchet. And it's turn and turn, all angles, and they're not budging one little bit. And then I got thinking, but we're still pig-headed. We're going to try a little bit more. But as I'm doing this, the thought come to me, I bought a new manifold with a new stud kit. So, why aggravate herself? And that's where I decided it's going to take, and we're going to eliminate the bolts the easy way. Now, I won't say the easy way is the easy, easy way, but I decided to cut them. There's a 90 degree air cutoff tool that'll access the one towards the outside edge, and you're taking, like I say, start cutting not the fastest working tool the regular cutoff tool works faster but can't really get at it on this angle but the same deal keep working at it cut through it a while and now perhaps i'm through enough it'll snap off with the setup i had but not yet so we're going to cut some more yeah on this if you get it about halfway through it should snap off and they're going to take give it another turn and we're going to see here once what's going to happen and it's moving and ha ha voila rust and a broken bolt okay this is where i said sort of easy now the other one is not as accessible <laughs> and i'm going to use actually a little angle die grinder with the cutoff wheel because even the air cutoff tool won't fit in there was no way to get in with the 90 degree that i used on the other bolt with the unless you lifted the car body off the frame and i did get up in there and you can see it's cutting sparks are flying i say it wasn't the handiest thing to get the good shot on but you get the general drift of it doing the cutting job and there's a view from the front side of it cutting you can just see the wheel up by, and when you're doing this be careful and don't cut a hole in the transmission or anything or cut any wires you don't want while you're doing it that wouldn't be good and finally it is going to take 
and it's going to come right off of there and there you can see it's moving on down and uh, it's free Alrighty, now we've got that loose we're going to take a look at it from up underneath and you can see where the bolts were cut Alrighty, if you've been following along up till now and doing this on your own well, this has been really fun and it don't get better this cgr tube pipe which it's a 1 and 16th inch and you can just barely reach up in there I can get the wrench on it and needless to say I don't think you know any different what's going to happen next it's not going to just turn loose anywhere handy but we're on it and we're going to try and <laughs> forget that without a wrench on it and it's not even thinking about it I say clearance is next to nothing and even with reaching my hand up around that doesn't do the trick and it takes me a little while and I do come up with an idea that helps out somewhat on this and the idea is remove the converter this car like I say is a police interceptor it's dual exhaust so I want to unplug the oxygen sensors and we're going to take and now just take and remove these two bolts back at the flange of the H pipe and we're going to get the converter out of the way if you had a single exhaust car well you have to take and do the other probably two bolts up at the other manifold and if you're not replacing both that would be a problem but in this case this helps out on the EGR tube and again there you can just cut it's nice and in the open not hard to get to use the cutoff tool and cut the bolts right off and that's easy enough three eighth inch nuts and bolts will fix the problem when it goes time to go put the back together again on doing this exhaust manifold job I do recommend if you don't have access to air and such not to even go try it on your own but that's your call and there is the one bolt off and then we're going to cut the other one off the head and get rid of that one the same way a lot of these air tools i'm using were bought at harbor freight or amazon i'll be sure to include a link in the description if you have the access to the air the air tools itself aren't so bad and then we're going to take grip that one with the vice grips and get it snapped off and uh, needs a little more cutting that one's quite ready and let's try this one more time and there she comes and that's taken care of okay now all we have to do is separate her from the H pipe which we want to take and tap it here with a little hammer just start breaking it free you can see the rust falling in there and we're going to take a little bit of a chisel between the flange gasket where the gasket had been and just start tapping a little bit and this actually goes pretty good I was surprised a little bit of tapping and you can see here it's starting to already break free and it's about ready to come apart and it's going to take and be able to be easy enough to put back together I could say with just new nuts and bolts when it's all apart and probably a little bit of shaking and just support it good don't let it hit yourself on the head while you're taking it off and it's slowly you can see the water dripping out of it from sitting and off it is now leads us back to that wonderful EGR tube pipe and I come with the brilliant idea I could get on it with a pipe wrench and a large pipe and perhaps break it free and it still didn't do it so now I was avoiding heating at all costs but I do have torches and I know most people don't but you're not going to succeed in this without probably some sort of heat especially when it comes to the manifold bolts but we're going to heat it up get it nice and red I'm using a small tip and be careful heating anytime on a car watch what you're doing watch around anything to catch on fire fuel lines or any insulation and finally after heating it it finally does break free and you can see it's turning not it's like I say I had to stop part of the way through and heat it again but it does come off of there and I do am able to salvage the EGR pipe and didn't have to buy a new one and as for that reheating here we go back up in for a second round that's one thing with the heat if you I was being cautious you could have probably made it hotter the first time but 
I don't particularly like heating. I know a lot of people are real quick to run the torches, and that's the same with those exhaust bolts. Some people would have took and just cut them off, but if I can use like a cut-off tool or something before cutting with torches, I will at all costs. That's sort of my last choice, but this time it does come off the rest of the way, and that'll take care of that, which now leads us down into the nitty-gritty of the job. And back down to lots of time heating with the torches. And it's going to be the exhaust manifold bolts itself. And we're going to start here with this lower one in the back. First, I'm just going to try it without heat, which I don't want to use anything bigger than a 3 8 drive ratchet. I'm going to try at all costs not to break any of these studs. Although, we'll tell on that what does or does not happen. It's, I'm always unfortunate when it comes to exhaust manifolds and usually seem to have at least one mishap. And on the subject of heat, here we're going to have to heat the little bolt. And these are 13 millimeters, what I found fit the best. Now, and back on the wrench thing, besides the deal trying not to break them off, there really isn't enough room for to get like a half inch drive ratchet in it. And their first try on it, and I'm going to have to take and reheat it. It's still not ready to come. At least I don't feel comfortable turning any harder on it. And heat him up one more time and get it there and you're going to see quick pull away. This one ain't on heating and that's probably part of my problem. The quicker you move after you heat it the merrier because it only stays warm for so long but that's something you only still have to put the torch net down and move but there heat it and here we come back up in with the wrench and let's see what happens this go around on it and there she's going to take and break free and there you can see it's turning that's one down only seven more of these to go there's eight in total that hold it on the exhaust yeah, time to go for another one. I decided to go get under the front of the car and get another one down underneath before working on top. I'm not really worried about I'm going to tighten them in proper sequence. I'm not really worried about the opposite of the tightening sequence on taking them off because the manifold's cracked anyhow. Just as long as I get them off and just heated it up. And we're going to give this one a try and see once what happens on this. And, aha, uh -huh, that one did go on the first try. That one wasn't quite as bad. A little bit more protected, sort of right up above the cross member of the Crown Victoria. And off it comes. That's one thing on these. They don't give you a break. They seem to turn off every thread of the way, even with the heat. And now I'm going to just turn the socket a little bit. And finally, by this point it had cooled off but anytime you heat be sure it's not hot yet but it was cool enough and just turned it off about the last thread with my fingers now i'm going to go work on one on the top i'm getting tired of working down underneath of the car and of course we're going to have to start with the heat yes i never had any torches till about 10 years ago and even then i didn't actually want them but this gentleman i knew was retiring from the garage business had a lease on tanks there was still a year left, and he's like, if you pick it up after the year, it's yours. I'll give you all the tips and everything, the cart that comes with it. And, well, deal was done. And since then, I wouldn't be without it. Now, since that time, though, I have went with smaller tanks. I don't use it a lot. I no longer lease the larger tanks. I just purchase smaller ones. But, yeah, once you have it with these cars, it can save you a lot of heartache but again do be careful in the usage of torches and they'll also still let you down and yeah, which wait and see but now here yeah, we're going to grab a hold of this again and finally it's going to take and break free and there's another one down i don't know what it is with fords and these exhaust manifolds i had this car a good while but I know there's 4.6s in the Ford F-150s, and I know they seem really big on cracking manifolds. And then, even have an old Explorer, it was my mother's. Now, that has a small V8, it's a 99, a 302, and that cracked the manifold. It seems to be a Ford thing. I, over the years, I've only ever remembered one cracked manifold on a GM product at a event. Okay, now we're going to work back down underneath the car again. And back to old Sparky, gonna heat it. It don't look like any of them's gonna come without heating. 
I figured I should remove all of these, just sort of the where they're at and the angle. Well, there is one I don't show you, but that will come later in the video. And as most of them, we're going to need to go the second round on the heat. Like I say, there's bigger torch tips I have, but just the area. And it's close to a lot of stuff you don't want to catch on fire. I'm sticking with that small tip on the torch. And one thing about it, this isn't the easiest going job. But it's sure a lot easier so far than I haven't had to eject the motor up and support it or anything. And there it is turning. As always, every thread of the way. But it is coming off. That's most important. I guess... Any exhaust manifold or anything is never the most pleasant thing with the bolts and that you have to remove. And there is another one off. Oh, and then on good news on exhaust manifolds, many moons ago I had a 78 Chrysler LeBaron, had an exhaust leak at the manifold. I figured it was cracked, needed a gasket. Well, I simply, it was my dad's suggestion, he's like, try tightening the bolts and <laughs> it fixed it and here we're working back up on the top of the crown vic again this is probably this and the one beside it's about the two easiest ones to access on the vehicle but i still again sooner work around the tight quarters and they were having you know, discharge the air cooling system and jacking the motor up this is still the lesser evil in my opinion i'm not interested in pulling the motor out i just want to change the exhaust manifold and there she's turning off and we're getting down the hill pretty good only a few more to go on the car and it looks like as everything's going to work out all right and there you can see from the underside uh, there's another view. I mean, the top, the crack is, looks like with loosening the manifold, it's definitely getting bigger. And there's another one of the nuts off. And there it is. And I do believe we got one down underneath here. This, and there's one up on the top at the rear. I think it's probably the worst two on the car. And we're going to start with the heat as usual. All right, I hope you enjoy showing these, everyone coming off. It gives you a good idea of where they're at and where to find them on yours and the angles of getting to them. And I can say, I know myself, every little bit helps uh, more video and such on a subject you're working on. And another typical stubborn one, and the double heat never fails and i say i guess that's keeps it interesting oh and by the way because this is going to be a fairly lengthy video the reinstall was going to be in a separate series i figured that'd be easier than trying to combine it in one and uh, perhaps with seeing how it comes off you won't even need to have to wash the reinstall or perhaps the you'll know, have yours off and there'll be something you find handy in the other one it just depends but i figured it'd be good to break it into two since this is around 30 minutes in length all right there's another one going to town coming off and that leaves one more at the top that's way at the back of the engine and that's going to be the one that is the surprise of the whole project the surprise is i couldn't get the camera back to even show it i couldn't get heat on it real good it's back about four inches behind where it happened when i just took off and the stud snapped off but anyhow with the stud off there it is it's easily came off the cylinder head no problem on that and we have it going to sort of slide it from the back down out from underneath the car and you watch here you grab a hold of it from down under the car and it starts to move and it wants to catch a little bit on the studs but just sort of keep working it around a little bit of a turn more clockwise than anything clearing the starter wires and there again you got just enough room between the cross member of the car and the exhaust manifold studs and slowly working it out even a little bit more at a time and it's stuck but again it's going to go here it's again it's tight clearances and out it is and ready for the get the next part of this taken care of 
which is going to be fixing that stud, although I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm going to do a whole separate video, and there is the broke stud. One clear at the back. And you can see the manifold gasket stayed on the engine. Not a big deal. Got that pulled off. And there's just a view of it off. As I say, seven out of eight of them came without no problem breaking it. And there is the manifold. And there you can either crack up and get a good close up. It was the whole way around underneath and up around the top of it. And it's sort of not much you can say. There's actually a second crack there that was starting from the original. It started gradually leaking and then it got louder. It's probably where the crack was enlarging and splitting up. Yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Please consider subscribing, like, comment. Here's a little trailer from my upcoming video on fixing the broke stud and how I'm going to repair it without pulling the head or anything off the car. The video is due out on June 22nd.